This is a Lego minifigure and it's probably one of the most iconic things ever. You can get minifigures of pretty much anything imaginable, but they're incredibly expensive. So today I spent over $100 on tons of fake Lego to see how well it lives up to the real thing. And believe me, some of these minifigures will absolutely shock you. Lego Marvel and DC have some of the best Lego sets with really unique and interesting minifigures. So I wanted to start off with a huge box of what was meant to be knockoff superheroes. I mean, are they going to be better than what Lego does? Uh, maybe. <laughs> what is... What is this? To be honest, I had absolutely no idea of what to expect and having spent over $100 on these minifigures, I had very high hopes while building because this thing came with tons of iconic characters. Like Spider-Man, one of my favourite superheroes who, to be honest, looks reasonably okay apart from having some weird yeah. eye thing. And this strange web piece that was uh, a bit sticky, so I am a, I'm a bit concerned. But I mean, you can't have Spidey without one of his best friends, Deadpool. A great kid-friendly hero who's only ever come in one Lego set and looked pretty decent apart from his sword, which didn't go in all the way, so I had to bend them. I'm so sorry, Ryan, I love you. And if you're anything like me and loved the Batman movie, not that one, nope, uh, again, mm, yep, yeah, that one, then you'll know who this character is. A classic Lego minifigure who's been recreated using fake Lego, which would have been okay if it wasn't for, oh my god, my eyes, oh, stop, what is this? Absolutely outrageous. What have I just seen? The thing is that LEGO actually has, you know, rules to follow when selling their sets, but these companies clearly don't because now I'm scarred for life, so thanks so, so much for that. Honestly, it makes me want to become the fastest man alive and run at the speed of light into oncoming traffic. Just like the Flash, who looks really nice in fake LEGO. 10 out of 10. This is a minifigure that LEGO's never made like this before, and it just goes to show how useful knockoffs can be for getting things that we've always wanted to see as minifigures. Like, maybe you want to see your favourite children's character, the Punisher, in LEGO with a massive gun so that he can use it to spread, um, love and peace. Or you might want to see what Black Panther would look like if he never cut his nails. Maybe even a super ugly version of Superman. This man has absolutely seen some horrific stuff. And now he can fight the knockoff Batman who doesn't have any gloves, so he has to fight Superman using his bare fist. And he's getting absolutely destroyed when he calls in his huge bat armor to help him. Genuinely one of the coolest things I've ever seen. This is the best Lego could do for the bat armor, and this is what some random illegal company could do. Prime 1, Lego 0. And I mean, it's obviously the strongest minifigure in the entire multiverse, which can be used to destroy absolutely everything, except for the ugly Wolverine, who can simply use the smell of his breath to knock out Batman. Oh my god. But this box came with loads more, like a Carnage big thing, and even an Iron Man minifigure, who upon first glance may just seem like a normal minifigure, but actually reveals himself to be Terry Star, a British geezer who has a pint down the local pub and destroys the villain. Right, listen here, you little t I've had about enough of you. I'm gonna smack you, bro. I'm gonna smack you. Terry is just so incredibly strong, so I needed some knockoff villains who might be able to stop him. Lego villains are some of the coolest minifigures ever, like the Joker who destroys whole cities, Thanos who kills half of the universe, and this idiot who brought me the ugliest pair of socks instead of the best Lego sets from my childhood. So I really need to overtake him in subscribers, please. So I cracked open the second box of minifigures. Wow. And things looked really promising initially, so I decided to start building and see what would happen. There were tons of cool minifigures, like this shiny new Thanos, the penguin, and even a minifigure of the green goblin from No Way Home. This is a minifigure that Lego's never made, and it's super expensive to buy as a custom. Yet here it is with a sick head mold, amazing printing, pump pumpkin bomb and even a new hair piece. As well as tons of pieces to make a glider which I had to custom make and honestly it, it could be better but I don't even care because this thing is incredible. And honestly I have to say this is where everything good ended. Right after that I had to build some knockoffs that weren't so good. Like this Venom who had one arm for some reason, this Scarlet Witch who looked about 65 and the Joker who I'm gonna call the comedian because he looked hilariously awful. <laughs> that, was, that was a good joke, didn't it? And his face looked like he'd actually used the dynamite on himself. But it wasn't quite as bad as Mysterio, a classic Spider-Man villain who had a fishbowl that was four sizes too big on his head, alongside what I think was meant to be the Juggernaut, but he looked like he just smelt someone who, you know, so that's not great. Honestly, these things weren't great at all, and apart from the Goblin, who was just absolutely incredible, I was starting to lose hope. I've just got to pray that the last box is better, because this is so not worth it. Ninjago, a classic Lego theme to find is quite literally the best Lego show in existence, which is obviously true. 
It's seen hundreds of different minifigures over its 12 year run and I bought a huge box of fake ones. I mean realistically, this was my last hope because I may have just spent like $100 on absolute trash. But I began building all of the minifigures and let me tell you, these were incredible. There were dozens of characters who came not only with unique weapons and molds, but also looked just like Lego. Like this Lloyd minifigure here who came with a cool sword and is identical to Lego's actual version. Or even Pythor who for some reason had this weird tail detached. I don't really get that, it's a bit weird. But it's better than paying like $30 for Lego's version. I mean imagine going into the Lego store getting $100 Ninjago set that comes with maybe like 5 minifigures when you could go onto sketchy website getting hundreds of viruses but get dozens of great minifigures that oh my god. This box not only came with some okay minifigures but also some of the most abominable things that I've ever seen. Like this Sensei Wu who looks like a dog that's been stung by a bee and deserves the most awful fate imaginable. Or maybe Chen, one of my favourite Ninjago characters who looks okay at initial glance but actually has his legs printed backwards. Which means he has the goofiest walk imaginable that's matched only by Kai's massively deformed face. This thing is actually haunting. Just like how nobody needs to see what's under the Golden Ninja's mask. I mean he has some weird goatee that was probably the reason the Overlord died because I wouldn't want to live after seeing that. But in fairness Skylar's face does look really nice and is legitimately really... Bruh. never mind. Just literally why would you do this? What compelled you? There is no need. These fake minifigures are almost as scary as seeing some random red bloke coming into your room and giving you the worst presents imaginable. I really need to overtake him in subscribers because I've just wasted my money on these awful awful minifigures. Please don't buy them. <laughs>